Hello. Thank you for joining me again for a noonday prayer, a little opportunity for midday reflection together. We'll use the opening from the noonday prayer order of service that begins on page 103 of the Book of Common Prayer. We'll find the scripture appointed for a particular leader in our world today that I wanted to just chat with you about. So let us begin with our settling ourselves and making time for a midday reflection. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. A psalm for today. Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where is my help to come? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved, and he who watches over you will not fall asleep. Behold, he who keeps watch over Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord himself watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand, so that the sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. It is he who shall keep you safe. The Lord shall watch over your going out and your coming in from this time forth forevermore. Glory to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Today, in the Episcopal, wonderful Episcopal Church volume, Holy Women, Holy Men, celebrating the lives of the saints in our life, May 13th is appointed for Francis Perkins. I drove down the shore road the other day on my bicycle and I saw a yard sign that said, bless the caregivers. And I thought, yes, that's exactly what, what we need to be doing in this crisis time. Caregivers, of course, can work in any arenas. They can be at a bedside or at a kitchen table or at a walk in the park with a friend or a parent soothing the anxiety of a child or, or, or the other way around, a child being a caregiver for their parents, no matter what age in life they are. Frances Perkins was such a caregiver and she had a long history in Maine, although she grew up in New York and eventually, of course, worked in Washington for the Roosevelt administration. She and her family had a long history in Newcastle, near Damerskata. In fact, her home there is now, is now preserved. She was a lifelong advocate for caregiving, for taking good care, for social justice and economic security. She was behind then responsible for initiating groundbreaking legislation, including many of the features of the New Deal and social security, disability payments, unemployment insurance and workers' compensation and, and minimum wage. She was an advocate before her time of things that we are acutely alert to in crisis times. In the uh, description of her life that appears in Holy Women and Holy Men, it's noted that as a young adult, she discovered the Episcopal Church and was confirmed at the Church of the Holy Spirit in Lake Forest, Illinois, and was a faithful and active Episcopalian for the remainder of her life. And after moving to New York, she became this advocate for industrial safety and a persistent voice for reform, of what she, which she thought were unjust labor laws and in the sweatshops and the small factories and manufacturing centers of the country. And President Roosevelt appointed her to the, her cabinet post as Secretary of Labor, a position she would hold for 12 years. The 
in Holy Women and Holy Men, the, the editors have chosen scripture passages to share with us as we, as we consider the life of, of each of these saints who graced our culture, some have graced our church, all have graced our world. And they chose for us to read today a passage from Luke. Luke chapter 9, verses 10 through 17. On their return, the apostles told Jesus all they had done, and they took him with them. They he, he, let me start that over. On their return, the apostles told Jesus all they had done. He took them with him and withdrew privately to a city called Bethsaida. When the crowds found out about it, they followed him, and he welcomed them and spoke to them about the kingdom of God and healed those who needed to be cured. The day was drawing to a close, and the twelve came to him and said, Send the crowd away, Lord, so that they may go into the surrounding villages and countryside to lodge and get provisions, for we here are in a deserted place. But he said to them, you give them something to eat. They said, we have no more than five loaves and two fishes, unless we are to go and buy food for all these people. For there were about 5,000 men. And he said to his disciples, make them sit down in groups of about 50 each. They did so and made them all sit down. And taking the five loaves and two fishes, he looked up to heaven, blessed and broke them and gave them to his disciples and set them before the crowd. They all ate and were filled, and what was left over was gathered up, 12 baskets of broken pieces. Here ends the story. Loaves and fishes. Loaves and fishes are, of course, what, what the world needs at the moment. What we have will be enough. We have been given all that we need, and it is up to us to bless it and share it and make the world whole again in God's name. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, hear our prayer, and let our cry come to you. A prayer is appointed for Francis Perkins. Loving God, we bless your name for Francis Perkins, who lived out her belief that the special vocation of all is to conduct the affairs of society that all may be maintained in health and decency. Help us following her example, to contend tires, tirelessly for justice and for the protection of all in need, that we may be faithful followers of Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.